Welcome back to my portfolio, everyone. And I'm going over the three dividend paying companies I bought this week. These are companies I plan on holding for the extreme long term. I bought them within my personal financial freedom portfolio, where I collect dividend income from these stocks in order to one day achieve financial freedom. All three of these companies pay consistent and growing dividends year over year, and they have all been growing their dividends at an extremely fast rate each year. So on this list today of the three different stocks I just purchased, these are all solid blue chip dividend paying companies that I believe will continue to grow over the long term. And with these companies, I have a combination of low yield, high growth, and a couple higher yield, slower growth stocks as well. So it'll be very interesting to see how these companies perform long term. So please like and subscribe and follow along my personal investing journey. And as you know, everyone, I am the Gen Z investor. And every single day on this channel, we talk about different stocks you can buy, overall stock market performance, and any other big stock market news and headlines. And in today's video, we're going over the top three stocks that I just added to my portfolio this week. The first stock I bought was ticker symbol MA, MasterCard, currently being traded at $331 a share. MasterCard is a company that I do believe will continue to operate for the extreme long term. I don't see any competitors completely knocking them out of the market. They are continuing to innovate, they're expanding their product line, and they're getting into other aspects of the financial tech world. So I do believe this company is on the right track to continue to grow moving forward. They have outperformed the market over the past five years, and I believe this is a stock that will continue to outperform the market moving forward. On the one-year chart, they are up 20%. They've seen a nice recovery from the March lows, but are not near that pre-pandemic high. Before this March low, you can see they were trading around $334 a share. So at $331, they haven't fully recovered just yet, but they have seen a nice growth of 20% on the one-year chart. A little bit of a longer term perspective, you can see they're up 237% over the past five years, which is absolutely incredible. So this company is very large with a $330 billion market cap and trading at a current dividend yield of 0.48%. So this company has seen insane growth over the past five years. Like I said here, before dividend reinvestment up 288% over the past five years. If we include dividends Total return in five years is 292%, which has actually outpaced their current industry and actually grossly outperformed the overall market, which has returned a total of 95% over the past five years. Taking a look at their low dividend, although this company pays a low dividend right now, I'm investing for the extreme long term. I have holding these holdings for over 20 plus years. So even though the dividend yield may be low right now, I expect it to grow at a very fast rate year over year, which one day when I eventually need to live off that dividend income, it will surpass what I'm expecting. Current dividend yield at 0.48% with a payout ratio of only 24%, which is extremely low. A lot of room for this company to continue to operate the business, grow and research and develop and innovate in order to grow operations and increase revenue year over year. And as well, there's a ton of room for that dividend to grow each and every year. And they have done an insane job of growing that dividend with 24.57% average dividend growth rate over the past five years. That is absolutely incredible. And they've had a nine year dividend growth streak. With regard to this lower dividend right now, it is very safe. It has the highest dividend safety rating possible at 99. So very unlikely that that dividend gets cut anytime soon, which is another reason that it drew me to MasterCard. It is because with these stocks, I'm looking to buy holdings where I don't have to worry about that dividend income getting cut. During the world we live in, a bunch of different companies have been cutting their dividends. One of my holdings has cut their dividend during this pandemic, and I really don't like holding companies who have dividends at risk. I believe in holding companies that have strong balance sheets, strong revenue statements, and can continue to grow and have the financial stability to grow that dividend for years on end without any worry in the short term. So another reason that kind of drew me to buying MasterCard, even though it's trading very highly right now, was this analyst report that just showed that 30 analysts went over the company, 21 said buy, 11 said strong buy, and 6 say hold. So it just kind of you know pushed me towards the idea that even though the shares are high right now, I believe they're going to be worth more in five years. And for all three of these companies that I bought this week, I believe from where their share price is today, I believe their shares are going to be worth a lot more five years down the road, which is why they made nice additions to my portfolio. Another thing I like to see from this MasterCard is that they've done a great job of beating what analysts are expecting. Over the past six reports, you can see all positive surprises, and they've been beating analyst expectations by a decent amount each and every quarter. This is a company that can continue to grow. I believe they operate in a sector that will only grow 
as people shift more towards buying items online, I do believe their use and demand will continue to go up. And I believe this is a company that will dominate the market and continue to outpace the overall market moving forward. The second stock I bought for my dividend portfolio this week was somewhat of a more boring company, JP Morgan Chase. It is the largest bank by market cap in the United States, currently being traded at $98 a share. Of course, we know the entire financial sector has been hit extremely hard by the, this pandemic, and especially with like record low interest rates. You can see here that pre-pandemic shares are being traded around $140 a share, so very high. That huge decline sent them down below $100 and currently being traded around $98 a share. So this is a company that has not even close to recover to their pre-pandemic ways. And if we take a look at their 52-week chart, they are trading towards the low side, which is what made this kind of attracted to me right now at this current price point. And with a market cap over $300 billion, this is the current highest market cap company in the financial institution by Americans. So if we move over, you can see here that their dividend yield right now is around 3.6%. They have a sustainable payout ratio at 64% of earnings. So this is a payout ratio that they can afford to grow the dividend each and every year and as well reinvest some money back into the business. They've been growing their dividend at a beautiful 16% average year over year over the past five years and they have a 10-year dividend growth streak. So the Fed passed this, made a stress test. JP Morgan actually passed that test and they are allowed to maintain their current dividend at the rate it is today. Even though there's still some uncertainty over that dividend payment over the next one to two years, I believe JP Morgan is the, has the strength to continue to grow. Once interest rates go back up, the pandemic is over. I believe this is a company that will thrive and actually outperform moving forward. Another reason I kind of bought at this price point was that I thought JP Morgan was undervalued. And then when I went through this Morningstar report, it kind of re like reinvested what I was thinking. So although they rank it as three stars, which represented by fair value, if we take a look at this thermometer chart, they have the fair value for JP Morgan shares at around $119 a share, currently being traded around $98, $99. It represents around an 18% discount or JP Morgan is valued undervalued right now by 18%, which is kind of what kicked me into buying the shares at this current price point. I already liked the company. I was already attracted to it. And then reading this report just kind of, you know, reassured what I was thinking with regard to this company. Taking a quick peek at their financial statements, one of the main reasons that draw me to them in the first place was that this company has done a nice job of growing revenue year over year. Total revenues were on a nice upward trend before the pandemic. And of course, even with this pandemic, revenues weren't hit as hard as analysts were expecting. Taking a look at their balance sheet with banks, you want to see total investments growing year over year, which is what we are seeing with JP Morgan. And you always want to see total assets growing over the long term. Another nice upward trend with regard to total assets each and every year. And once again, total deposits, because banks use total deposits in order to lend out money, generate interest and capital gains. And that's what kind of brings in their personal revenue as a company. You can see here total deposits for JP Morgan growing steadily year in and year out, which is beautiful to see. So the financial sector has been hit extremely hard. Warren Buffett is buying Bank of America. I believe I'm going to add to my Bank of America position moving forward. But right now I went with JP Morgan. I do believe, this, do believe this company will continue to grow long term. And I believe of the two, they will outperform Bank of America over the long term. Moving on, the third stock I added to my portfolio this week was another low yield, high growth dividend pair. ATVI, Activision Blizzard. This is a video game company currently being traded at $83 a share. They're on an insane run up, up 75% on the 12 month chart. So of course they're being traded very near all-time highs. And of course, right now it's very hard to buy a company when they're at their all-time high. But this is a stock that I believe has so much future growth potential that I believe they will reach new all-time highs each and every month, each and every quarter and every year moving forward. This is a company that I believe will continue to grow for years on end. They operate within the video game sector, which is on an insane run-up. And this is a sector of the market that I believe has even seen its close to its fullest potential. And of course, with other sectors of video games, such as the you know, tournaments, live streaming, and actually on television cable events growing in the video game sector, this overall company can see a lot of future revenue potential moving forward. So currently have a dividend yield of 0.5% extremely low dividend yield but of course like i mentioned they own and operate some of the most popular video game brands in the world such as call of duty overwatch and of course candy crush the mobile app so this is a company that has so many different revenue streams they're highly diversified within the video game sector and they're operating with a super high growth sector that i believe will continue to grow
So they're paying out 0.5% yield right now. Their payout ratio is below 13%. So they're barely paying out any of their earnings as a dividend. They're keeping so much money back into the business to reinvest and grow. And they are growing that dividend at a nice 13% average over the past five years. And they have a 10-year dividend growth streak. Once again, this is a very, very safe dividend company with a yield of only half a percent with a 13% payout ratio. They have the highest dividend safety score of 99, so extremely unlikely that that dividend gets cut anytime soon. And this is a company I like to hold because I'll get to see that nice capital appreciation as well. I'll collect that very small dividend, but I don't even have to worry about that dividend getting cut anytime soon. The final thing was this analyst report. 31 analysts took a look at ATVI. 18 buys, 9 strong buys, 3 hold, and only 1 single strong sell. I'm sure this was just an analyst that wanted to lock in some profits. But overall, nice buy analyst expectations, which kind of you know bumped me once again into getting ATVI at this current share price. And of course, they've done an insane job of beating analyst expectations. If you take a look at the 6 reports, all positive, but they destroyed what analysts were expecting. 25% surprise, 46, 37, 3, 53, and 41. This is a company that is beating expectations quarter over quarter. They're growing at a rapid rate each and every year, and I don't even think they've come close to reaching their future potential or their peak. So those are the three dividend-paying companies I added to my portfolio this week. I have a financial freedom portfolio that I hold dividend-paying stocks for the long term, and I, of course, collect that nice dividend income each and every quarter, and I like to reinvest the dividends watch the shares grow, and of course, one day be able to live off these dividend payments. So thank you for watching, everyone. I'm the Gen Z Investor, and see you in tomorrow's video.